Jinx here with Complex News. The flaws of the American prison complex are hard to ignore. We have some very extreme laws and procedures designed to jail as many people as possible, either keep them in jail or in the revolving doors of our court system. Jeff Mazansky is one of these people. According to NBC News, Mazansky began his jail sentence in 1996 after being caught selling six pounds of weed to a dealer connected to Mexican drug lords. Add this to his two priors that included the possession and sale of illegal substance in 1984 and possession again in 1991, this rap sheet of offenses, despite all of them being non-violent crimes, landed him a life sentence in prison without parole. Life. Again, let's be clear here. Marijuana, as well as other drugs, are still largely illegal here in the United States. But do wasn't trafficking banned firearms, stealing millions from the government, shooting up public establishments, or harboring illegal plutonium. He got caught with drugs one too many times, and somehow that cost him the rest of his human existence. Again, it is bad, but is that really a reasonable sentence, especially when you look at the other imbalances of crime and punishment here in America? Also, consider that Mazansky was the only nonviolent prisoner serving life in Missouri. This sentencing came down from Missouri law set up to enforce harsher laws on repeat drug offenders, a law that has since been changed to add some level of reason to the process. As a result of that, and continued lobbying from supporters, Missouri Governor Jay Nixon commuted Mazansky's sentence as early as this past May, calling attention to his nonviolent rap sheet and the fact that he was never documented selling drugs to children. After serving two decades behind bars, Mazansky is now a free man. 20 years. Can you imagine how much has changed? When Jeff went to jail, CD players were a luxury, Clinton was president, Facebook's creator was like 12, and there were no iPhone shit. There were barely even cell phones. Now he won't be able to get back the last two decades of his life, but he'll be able to live out the rest of his life in society as long as he stays away from the long arm of the law. American incarceration is an issue. In 2010, the U.S. Census reported that we had 2.3 million prisoners in the United States, with an incarceration rate of about 700 people out of every 100,000. In fact, the Washington Post reports that we now have more jails than we do degree-granting colleges or universities in America. In numerous parts of our country, there are more people living in incarceration than on college campuses. And it is a widely known fact that American jails more of its citizens than any other nation on earth by a considerable amount. This is partially due to many of the tough on crime laws, like three strikes, that were catapulted in the 80s and 90s, visible in this graph. Between 1992 and 2003, life sentences increased 83% despite the amount of violent crimes lessening during the same time. The use of mandatory minimums and guideline-based sentencing only add to this issue, while at the same time removing judges and human reasoning from the evaluation of cases and sentencing of crimes. So, just scraping the surface, it's not far-fetched to say that we've developed a jailing system that is more like a conveyor belt pushing out microwave dinners as opposed to a means of actually providing a safer society and rehabilitation for criminals. But hey, just putting you guys up on some game. For Complex News, I'm Jinx. Always first, always best. Your stories, your characters, your culture. Subscribe to Complex on YouTube today.